Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today we're going to have a look at what's in this box. What could possibly be in the box, Herbert? I'll tell you. It's a French FT-17 light tank with a riveted turret, and it's in 135th scale by Meng. This was generously sent to me by Metro Hobbies, who have sponsored this video, and the build video which will be coming soon. Fairly soon anyway. The build stream will be happening sooner. If you like what you see here, and you are thinking about purchasing this kit for yourself, there's a link in the description through which you could do so. I would certainly appreciate that. Okay, so you've had a chance to look at the box, and I think it's a pretty appealing box, but what we're really here for is what's inside. Plastic, as usual, is what's inside the box. Not quite so usual, or unusual as some might say, are these first two sprues. It's the diorama that you may have seen mentioned on the box. I'm not quite sure that I would call it a delicate diorama like the box does. It looks pretty good though. I think it would be pretty easy to make this look quite convincing, even with just a little bit of paint. Obviously scenery materials like some sort of mud paste and rocks and maybe some static grass would make it look even better, but you could still get a good result with just a bit of paint. Or at least that's what I think. There's lots of bits of wood and debris included here, and the moulded in wood grain actually looks pretty good in my opinion. I'm looking forward to seeing how this builds up. I'll probably try adding some extra stuff to it at some point, but I think it's going to look pretty good straight out of the box. Well, not straight out of the box, it's just bits, but once you glue it together, you know what I mean. Now, let's look at some of the sprues for the tank itself. This looks really good. This is my first Meng kit, and I have heard a lot of good things about them, and while it's a bit silly to judge a manufacturer based on one kit, I'm pretty happy to see that all those good things I've heard are true. The detail here looks really nice. One of the first things I noticed is that there's a lot of rivets on this thing. I mean, it is a World War I vehicle, so there are going to be a lot of rivets. I'm not going to count them, and I have no idea if these rivets would please those who do count such things, but these parts look pretty convincing to me. On this sprue here, we can see quite a few fine little details. These are probably going to be at least a little bit fiddly, but that's okay. I kind of expect some fiddliness on scale models like this. I'm really happy to see on those small parts, and older parts really, but especially on the smaller ones, that they're very neatly moulded and don't look like they're going to need much clean up at all. There are barely any mould lines. I mean, they are there, and they will need at least a small amount of work to remove, but I'm not anticipating much trouble. I've found that having to do a lot of cleanup on small parts is one of the best ways to lose them to the carpet monster, and if you've seen my streams, you'll know that's not one of my favourite things. Even the larger parts are quite neat, not that that's surprising, they're all on the same sprues, so they should be pretty consistent anyway. One of the things I didn't really realise when I asked for this kit was that it has an interior. Some of the parts on this sprue might be for the interior, and I'm just waffling while you look at the parts really, but I think it's really cool that it has an interior. I'm pretty sure the FT has a driver's hatch that opens up quite a lot, and that should be enough to show off the interior quite well. Of course it does mean that I'll have to pause somewhere mid-build to paint the interior, but I think that's okay. It should be worth it. As you can see, there are two of this sprue which contains wheels, and from what I can tell, other wheel associated things. If you've been around my channel for a while you'll know that I'm really not that good at identifying parts, so they could really be anything. What matters is these parts, like everything else we've seen so far, are quite nice and neat. This here is clearly a turret sprue. I suspect the turret, or at least the exterior, comes on its own sprue so that it can easily be swapped out for a cast turret sprue. That way, only a minimum of different moulds have to be made to make a cast turret kit. Simple enough, and I think you'll agree that the parts look rather turrety indeed. This is a really long thin sprue, and it mostly has wheels, which is really helpful for the tank's movement. There's also a couple of doodads which I assume are wheel related. This is a pretty hefty looking sprue for wheels, but it looks like that makes for some really neatly moulded parts that won't need a lot of cleanup, and I certainly appreciate that, especially when it comes to wheels. I seem to spend a lot of time cleaning up wheels, hopefully not in this case. The tracks come in a little baggy, and I've left them in that baggy because I don't want to lose them before I start building. That would be a bit of a bother. They do look good though. These are obviously individual links, 
but as far as individual links go, they look like they'll be quite easy to deal with. Another baggie with things that are being left sealed inside to avoid loss are these bits. They're suspension parts and I think the springs make that kind of obvious. So I guess this kit is going to have workable suspension. That's fun. I hope it goes together without any issues. I guess we'll find out soon. There's a fret of photo etch included and it looks very photo etchy. Well said, Herbert. It doesn't look like there's going to be too much bending or anything complicated with this. I mean, I have been wrong about photo etch before, but I'm optimistic about this. I understand that long strap which partially came loose when I dropped the fret. I understand that to be what the man in the turret would be sitting on. Decals are also included. There's not a lot of marking choices here, but that's okay. There's enough to represent the model depicted on the box and in the painting guides. I'm sure if you need some other markings, I can't imagine it being too hard to find some aftermarket decal options out there. These look good though, and while I've never used Meng decals before, I'm sure they work perfectly well. The kit comes with a piece of paper with two basic painting and marking guides on it. The first representing a US tank, and the second a tank belonging to the National Revolutionary Army of China, neither of which is French. I mean, it is still a French tank, I just kind of assumed that there would be markings for one in French service. Not really a big deal and like I said, you could probably find aftermarket decals if that's what you want, and you can paint it any way you like. You don't need to do what the piece of paper says. Though I would advise that you should at least pay some attention to these pieces of paper. The instructions. The first few pages have a bunch of information in a few languages, and that's cool, but the important part here is the diagrams. They're pretty well laid out and easy enough to understand and follow, and it looks to me like there isn't too much going on in each step, which is nice. Sometimes instructions do put a bit too much in one diagram, which I find, at least for me, can lead to things being missed. I'm pretty sure that's not going to be the case here though. There's paint callouts and that's helpful if you want to paint as you build, which I don't find practical personally, so I'll be pausing to paint the interior at some point through the build and then resuming gluing bits of plastic together after that. It looks to me like this is going to be a sort of complicated build, but not overly so, and I don't anticipate it taking too long to build. Having to paint the interior is going to cause a little bit of delay, but that's okay. It looks like it's going to be a fun build, and I'm expecting the result to be quite good. I'm pretty sure I've seen this kit shared by folks in my Discord server, and I was impressed by it there, so I'm definitely expecting good things. Of course, I might be thinking of something totally different too. I'm old and get confused. Anyway, I'm waffling now, and I've shown you everything that's in the box. I think you will agree that this looks like a pretty good kit, and it's not an especially expensive one either. I'm going to start working on this pretty soon, and as usual I'll be building it on stream. So if you want to see the entire build, complete with bits that aren't usually in the build videos, and probably more than enough bad jokes, that would be the place to go. I'm planning on starting this kit on my morning streams, beginning on Monday the 6th of September, and I usually try to start around 9am. That's obviously local time, Australian Eastern Standard. You can either convert that yourself to your local time or check the schedule on Twitch. A short while after the model is completed on stream, there'll be a build video here on YouTube. If that's already done, there should be a link below. If not, soon, TM. So be sure to check those things out if you want to see how this kit goes together. I am expecting good things. As I said at the start of the video, this has been sponsored by the good folks at Metro Hobbies. They're one of my favourite Australian hobby shops, and they would get a hearty thumbs up from me even if they didn't sponsor me. If you want to buy this kit in particular, there's a link in the description below. I would suggest you also look through their other stuff as well, and there's a more generic link you can use to do that. Check out the wide variety of model kits, hobby supplies, and other cool things like Lego and RC toys. I hope this video has been somewhat helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put those in the comment section below. If you've built one of these and you've got any hints or things I should look out for before I start, feel free to let me know that in the comments as well. Obviously I don't need to be told how to build it, but it is nice to know if there's something to look out for. If you've not already done so, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, consider becoming a patron if you want to see my videos a bit early, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch when I'm live next. 
You can find links to all of my things, like social media, in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, have an amazing day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.